Now for ID, Maximilian Kra. Yeah. Thank you very much. <clears throat> First of all, I think that uh, the China policy is uh, in very good hands uh, with uh, the rapporteur. He is uh, driving it forcefully in the right direction. Uh, some remarks. First, uh, we have heard now in the debate that we have to bring China to accept European values. I would want a little bit to take this uh, form uh, formulation. Um, we have to force China or to, to ad uh, advocate global and uh, global values. But to say you have to accept European values is a language and is an idea that could uh, be uh, recognized as somehow uh, neo-colonial. And by the way, the Chinese have to accept global values, but not European values. Uh, otherwise, uh, it, is a, it is a past that we don't want to make the future. First thing. Second, we should never forget uh, that what we do now <clears throat> is quite costly because China is uh, the in numbers greatest trade partner of the European Union and of uh, Germany as well. And uh, the, the CHI is an agreement that would benefit more to us than to the Chinese. The Chinese wanted to have the, uh, the agreement itself as a political success, but economically the European industry benefits from it. So we have an economic interest uh, to come to an agreement, and this agreement would solve many of the problems we have mentioned now. And uh, the third part is, uh, if we look to the development China has made in the past 30 years, <clears throat> then I think we should be more optimistic. They have brought 700 million people out of poverty and hunger, um, and if you compare the level of liberty and individual liberty in China in, let's say, 1978, when they began to open with today, then we see a, a huge development. And uh, I always say, let's be positive, uh, let's be optimistic and continue to talk with each other and not to, to try to be the strictest and toughest. That is not what we should do. And that is not the way we had success in the past. Thank you.